the public will will just look at the numbers I've presented to you and your your group profits have gone up from before the COVID pandemic to now, from 1.6 billion to 2.03 billion. That's a bigger number. I'm sure there are lots of reasons underneath it, but essentially you, you've got more cash in the bank at the end of the day uh, based on your reported accounts. And so the question is, why, given the COVID pandemic, the energy crisis, this, the increase in cost for your supply, the increased cost to your customers, how can it be possible that you're making hundreds of millions of pounds in additional profit? To begin with, um, presumably all of your companies recognise that we're still in the midst of a cost of living crisis where a very significant number of your customers are unable to afford to buy the food uh, and fuel that they need uh, to support their households. I'm assuming everybody agrees with that. Um, and it was announced today that inflation has come down a little bit to around 8%. Um, but for the public, I think that translates as meaning that prices are still going up at a rate of 8%. Is that also right? Yeah. So customers are struggling and prices are still going up. So the question that many have been asking, including the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, the Competition and Markets Authority and others, is whether, and I'm quoting the government here, whether the supermarkets have been behaving or not in their pricing. Um, and one of the accusations is that um, all of your companies, I think for the exception of, with the exception of Morrison's, have been making increased profits, and therefore have you been doing enough to keep down the prices of the food that you supply to your customers? So I just want to take that question head on, uh, and in the context of increased profits, are you doing enough to help? So uh, Gordon um, Gaffer for um, Tesco, are you doing enough to help your customers? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, it, I would start by saying that um, at uh, Tesco at the moment, we are the most competitive we have ever been. Um, we have a real powerful combination, in our uh, opinion, uh, of uh, Aldi price match, for example, which we have recently expanded. And just to go into a little bit of detail what that means, we have 700 lines that we price match uh, every week to Aldi. And customers, when they come to Tesco shops, are guaranteed that they will not pay anything more for those lines in Tesco. But that's just not, it's not the only thing we're doing. So, for example, we have a low everyday prices campaign where we lock prices, and that's over a thousand lines. In the majority of our uh, stores, fixed for periods of um, um, three months, for example, and they cover all the market with regards to how we uh, price match. Uh, and finally, through club card prices, uh, you will have in any given week about uh, 8,000 prices where we go up to 50% promotions and uh, offer our club card holders real unbeatable value. Uh, I wanted to tackle the uh, profitability question head on. Uh, we have not made uh, more profit year on year. Uh, we have actually made 7% less profit uh, versus uh, our last financial year. Um, so I think it's important to be uh, clear at the outset on that point, Mr well, Chairman. And maybe you can help me, because you all run very complicated businesses. So I, I had a quick look at the annual accounts for each of your companies and specifically compared your performance before the COVID lockdowns to the last financial year, because, of course, COVID made things much more difficult to understand. And, and, and to take Tesco as an example, according to your 2018-19 annual accounts, you made a profit of £1.6 billion. And in your 21-22 accounts, you made a profit of £2.03 billion. So just as a very basic review of the accounts, you've increased your profit quite significantly there, haven't you? I think if I, it, when I look at our group um, profits, we, we, are, we are a business made out of various companies, including retail, wholesale, uh, international business in, Czech, in, in the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary and Ireland. Um, our profitability has hovered between 3 to 4 percent in the last um, four or five years, and I quote from our group accounts uh, since, since 2019. Um, and it, it, as I say, the profits year on year for the group, for the group business are, are down. Um, and uh, I would like to remind maybe the committee, just in the interest of um, transparency, we have sold more year on year, we have made less, and that is within, uh, which is public, public information. We have had a really big savings program at Tesco. We have saved 550 million pounds. We have given our colleagues 15% um, pay increase in the last year, 22% over the last couple of years. <coughs> uh, and if you do the maths, I guess, between what we sold and what we made, it's a significant investment in our customer offer. 
uh, as well as our colleagues, which we're really quite proud of, actually. I'm, and I'm sorry to cut in, but the public will, will just look at the numbers I've presented to you, and your, your group profits have gone up from before the COVID pandemic to now, from 1.6 billion to 2.03 billion. That's a bigger number. I'm sure there are lots of reasons underneath it, but essentially you, you've got more cash in the bank at the end of the day uh, based on your reported accounts. And so the question is, why, given the COVID pandemic, the energy crisis, this, the increase in cost for your supply, the increased cost to your customers, how can it be possible that you're making hundreds of millions of pounds in additional profit? I would reiterate the point, Mr. Chairman. I'm, around, uh, I'm looking at the numbers. Our adjusted uh, operating profit for the group in 2019 were 2.6, and in 2023 they're 2.6 again. So uh, there may be, I don't know, maybe some discrepancies in what we're comparing. But uh, as I, I, I need to move on. But just so you know, for the record, this is the Tesco PLC annual report and financial statements from 2018 to 2019, where a chap called Alan Stewart, who is your chief financial officer, reported a group statutory profit before tax of uh, £1.6 billion. And then when I turn to the same report from 2022, it's a different chap this time, but he reports on the same measure, £2.03 billion. Pounds. So I'm just reading the numbers I'm, from your I'm, I'm referring to our latest uh, issued accounts for 2020 to 2023, so that, that may be the discrepancy. I'm, I'm happy to, I guess, Okay. Also, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Comerford, from uh, the perspective of ASDA, are you doing enough to help your customers right now? So, in a, in a similar way to uh, what we've just discussed, so if you looked at the ASDA full year 2022, to account sales were flat uh, on a year on year basis, but profit of the adjusted EBITDA perspective was down by 25%. So, that reflects what we've been trying to do to manage the inflation that we've been seeing. We all know the uh, drivers that we've seen of inflation in the in the UK market, um, whether that's from some of the supply chain issues through the pandemic, whether the weak pound and uh, labour market costs, um, the, the war in Ukraine certainly uh, affecting uh, food and energy prices out there. Um, we've done a, a series of uh, customer uh, facing initiatives uh, with a launch of Just Essentials, which is our entry price range um, uh, in all of our stores. We have uh, done a dropped and locked campaign where not only we've dropped the prices of products, we've also held them for a period of time. Uh, we've launched a, a rewards program uh, and a, a loyalty pr a program, so the more that you shop at Asda, the more you get rewarded uh, for that, as well as investing in, the, in some of the key uh, food offers out there. And in our cafes, we, we offer kids um, the chance to eat for one pound. Um, as uh, a lot of the my competitive set have also done, we've also invested in our colleagues as well with a series of pay increases, uh, uh, which has been necessary as we faced into this cost of living crisis. Thank you. And the ASDA accounts are quite difficult to read because you've had a significant change in the way that your business is owned and financed. One of the things I've noticed is that your cost of borrowing has gone from in 2018-2019 from £66 million pounds to the year 21-22 uh, to nearly half a billion pounds. Why have your debt payments had to go up so significantly and what does that mean for your customers? So as you say, we've had an ownership change during that time period um, and therefore as a consequence the way we are, are owned and are structured is different. So as you were comparing um, three, three years prior to that. All I would say is therefore that bit has then been factored in as we've looked to um, our business and our accounts and therefore despite that, as what you're talking to in terms of the uh, financial structure, we're still investing in the customer offer. That's why we have invested in Just, uh, just Essentials um, as rewards, dropped and lot programmes as well as uh, cafes for our customers. Uh, Rian Bartlett coming to you next from a, a Sainsbury's perspective. Again, the same question, I've just looked at the annual accounts. 2018-19, there was profit before tax of £239 million, 21-22, £854 million. There's been a significant increase in profit at Sainsbury's. Are you doing enough to help your customers? So, the first thing we would like to say is we're acutely aware of the impact of the cost of living crisis on our customers and also on our colleagues and how difficult that they're all finding it right now. Uh, We've spent £560 million on keeping prices low, um, battling inflation, and we're doing absolutely everything we can uh, to keep prices as low for customers as possible. Uh, like uh, Tesco and Asda, we have a range of price um, mechanics and activations that we 
um, choose to invest in um, to help our customers. So we also have an Aldi price match um, offer. We have about 300 products in that. They're the products our customers buy the most frequently. We've been very choiceful about making sure that that's covering a set of products that are in their baskets week in, week out. We also have price lock and we have loyalty pricing. And in addition to that, we have an economy range called Stamford Street, and we've just brought all of our lowest priced products under one brand so that they're really easy to find. In terms of the accounts that you reference, um, actually our most recent year that we've just published, we made 690 million. So our um, input costs are not being fully passed through to our shelf prices. We've submitted lots of detail on that to the CMA. We've had very good discussions and dialogue with the CMA. Um, but we are inflating behind our input costs and we're inflating wherever possible behind the market. Thank you. Um, and, and David Potts from Morrison's, I suppose the saving grace is your profit's gone down, not up, uh, from 2018-19 compared to 21-22. So I can't, can't quite put the same question to you that you're running away with excess profits. But what are you doing to help your customers with the cost of living crisis? Uh, thank you, Chair. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I think it's a privilege uh, for Morrison's and I'm very pleased to be here uh, in person myself. I think we are acutely aware of the pressure that many millions of you know, ordinary people have come under as a result of this cost of living crisis and food inflation in particular. I know that since it started we have donated four million to food banks to make sure no one is left behind in that same period. We've helped our customers by collecting the goods they want to donate to food banks and, and delivering them there ourselves. A further eight million, and that does come on top of the 12 million that I know members of the select committee will be aware. We donated from the company during the pandemic to food banks. I think as far as what have we done this year, well, so far I reported on Thursday our profits were down 10% half year one. Um, as we faced into lower prices. By investing early in lower prices, we are as close now as this company has ever been to to Aldi and Lidl prices. Um, and my, I think, final remark would be we have introduced <coughs> a, a, a brand called Savers, which according to Kantar last week, who commented on the industry on various matters, is the fastest growing sort of fighter brand, the budget brand in the UK uh, this year. And I believe that's because we've lowered prices with a tougher policy for us to get through with those prices of savers. We've made delivery uh, more attractive and we've increased the item count to 240 for of that items and we've put them where people can see them uh, and buy them. And so I think it's a very fair question and there's more we can do, but I'm very confident that so far we're getting at every cost we can in order to put it into prices. Thank you. And then just very lastly from me, um, all of you are very large employers as well as serving very significant numbers of consumers. Um, and I heard recently, specifically there are Asda employees, but I'm sure it applies in other supermarkets, of employees having to go to the food bank to pick up the free donations of food they'd stacked in their own supermarket because they can't make ends meet. So I just want to ask each of you very quickly whether you're a living wage employer. Um, uh, Gordon? Uh, we, we are, as I said, we are really quite proud to have given um, a 15% increase to our colleagues. You're uh, living wage. I, I, would, I would like... I, I just, I'm conscious of time, so it's just a short answer. Are you a living yes. wage employer, yes or no? We are a real, uh, real living wage employer, yes. Thank you. Chris, yes. Asda, you yeah. are. Rianne, yes. please. David Morrison. National living wage, 10.42. We're paying 10.92 with a 15% discount. Okay. 